In this video, we're going to learn about while loops. So the first thing we'll do is this a little example right here. We have a, a function here that takes in one input, and we will uh, loop that many times and print out hello, however many times they have the input. So in calling this function, we can do print hello five, and it prints hello out five times. One, two, three, four, five. Now just some of the details, we start at zero and we go until five, but not including five. So it's at zero through four, which is still um, five times. Now this is a for loop uh, and you've hopefully already know this, have learned it before, but uh, for loops are really great when you know exactly how many times you're going to do something before the loop runs. In this case, we know after we got this input, we know exactly how many times we want this for loop to work. Now, there's another kind of loop called a while loop. And while loops are better when we don't know how many times we want to do something, but we want to do something until a certain condition happens. So uh, let's uh, change uh, this for loop into a while loop. We can go while. And we can go i is less than times. Now, um, while loops can do everything a for loop can do. Um, so you can always use while loops. But in some cases, there are while loops that, cannot, uh, that can do things that for loops cannot do. So um, we'll just finish this uh, function real quick. And we'll just say i equals zero. So we initialize a variable to a, an initial value, so zero. And it's while i is less than times print hello. And then we'll go i plus equals one each time through the loop. So um, I'll even uh, print out i at the same time so we can see the value of i. So let's see what this program does. And you can see it works the same way as our previous for loop did. So um, once again, you can convert every for loop into a, a while loop. And your homework will actually make you convert uh, for loops into while loops. So this is basically how you did it. Notice we, um, before, I'll just put in comments, before we had for i in range zero two times. Okay, so the starting point, we initialize i equal to uh, the starting point right here. And then we have our condition right here, and i is less than times. And then uh, what we do inside of the loop. And then we also need uh, something that could change our condition. And we'll see many more examples of this. But just so you know, again, this is a block just like our for loop. And this loop will keep happening while this is true. So just like we had our if uh, statements that had uh, conditions on whether or not we do them, this is a condition that says, if this is true, then do the loop again. And so it'll do the loop again, and then we'll come back. If this is true, do it again, and it'll do it until i is equal to 5, and this is no longer true. And then when it's done, it'll pick up execution right here after the block. So notice the indentation, this is what gets repeated. When it's done, that's what gets done. Now we did this function in our last day of class where we drew a cat on a canvas um, right here. So we just add a rectangle. The inputs are a picture to draw the cat on and the coordinates of where we want the cat to be placed. So we add one uh, square for his head and two squares for his ears. So to show this, we'll just uh, have our canvas equal make empty picture. We'll do 800 by 800. Okay, so remember we're making this picture 800 by 800 because that will come into play a little bit later on. Um, then we can uh, draw a square cat on our canvas at uh, 50, 50. Okay. 
you will see right here, um, we have our square cat um, right there. So um, it, it works. And now we can draw another square cat, maybe at 100, 100, and another one at 150, and 150. And so we could see we keep, each time I draw a square cat, I add a new cat onto the canvas. Now, it's important to see that I did not, um, I did not I erase my canvas after each time. I just added a new cat onto the canvas. And as you can see, I added three cats on here. So we can add um, these things in here. We can add a new function that will add multiple cats. So we'll say draw a crowd right here onto my canvas. And so now we in here we can say draw square cat. And just the same commands that I did below. And I'll just snap my fingers and quickly add the rest. So now we have a draw crowd. So we'll go back up here, make our a new empty picture. And now we can just draw a crowd on our canvas. And um, by the way, I'm just making the, the picture smaller so we can see everything in there. Um, on all of our uh, cats right there. But I, I just zooming out is all I'm doing just so we can see it because our, our cats will go off the edge of the screen eventually. But now um, let's just say I want to add 100 cats. It's going to get kind of annoying to try to type 100 uh, cats um, or draw square cats right here. So maybe we can do this in a loop. And so we can go for um, x in range. 0 to um, we'll go 800 and we'll increment it by 50. Now if you remember I made my canvas 800 by 800 right here and then now I can go add um, add a square cat to my canvas at x comma x. So I'm using x as both the x and y coordinate here, but now that will keep adding um, cats onto our picture. Now, you might um, have forgotten what this range with three coordinates does, so I'll just copy and paste that down here so we could see it. And you can see that it will, it starts at zero and goes to 800, but not including 800. And this last thing is how much we add by. So we get 0, 50, 100, 150, 200, all the way up to 750 right here. So when I'm going to call add square cat with 0, 0, then again with 50, 50, and then again with 100, 100. So we should be able to get all the cats in. And in this case, I'm using a for loop, but I know exactly how many cats I want to add onto my um, picture right there. So, and now um, we'll just uh, make a new empty canvas. We'll draw our crowd. Um, and it looks like I didn't spell add square cat right. I, it should be draw square, square cat instead. We'll try this again. And you can see we have cats going all the way down. Just let me uh, zoom back a little bit so you can see them all a little bit more. And there you go. There's our, our canvas right here. And we can see all of our uh, cats going down. Now, in this case, I, I have it all planned out beforehand. I know exactly how many I'm going to add. 
or that I'm going to add one every 50. We can also do this with a while loop. And the advantage to that is I don't have to kind of calculate how many cats I want to start. So I'll just do this. Um, we'll say our width is equal to our canvas, or the get width of the canvas. Okay. And we'll also go x equals 0 to start it off with. And we'll say while x is less than our width right here. So we'll keep adding pictures until x falls off the edge of our picture. So in that case, um, we don't really have to, we don't know how many pictures we want to add. We just know we want to keep adding until x becomes bigger than the width of our canvas. So now we can just draw our square cat on our canvas at the x and x location. And let's try this one more time. And you can see I'm I kind of gotten in an infinite loop because I, I did the ultimate uh, thing right here where, um, by the way, you should be able to press stop to get out of it, but x doesn't change at all in this loop, so it's always going to be 0. So we're going to be stuck in this loop forever. So that's a, a little trick with uh, while loops. If we forget to change our, our variables up here, then our condition will always be true and we'll be stuck forever. Luckily, we have this stop button to stop us. So now we could say x plus equals, and we don't have, we'll just use 30. Of course, maybe we can do some math and calculate exactly how many times that's going to happen. But with a while loop, I don't have to do that. I'll, when I'm thinking, I'm just, I want to keep drawing cats until x falls off the edge of my picture. So that's what while loops are really great for. So um, let's again start over, draw my crowd, and it's floor our cats, and now you can see we have cats all the way down. I'll just zoom way down so you can see all the cats on our picture right there is probably the size of our picture all zoomed down. So um, there's a while loop and a great way to um, a great way to add uh, make a crowd of people when you go to do your homework. You can use that to draw a crowd. Now for another homework assignment, you're going to have to convert for loops into while loops. So remember, every for loop can be converted to a while loop. Um, so we're going to convert this one. This is uh, from uh, page 94 in your book, um, program 35. It increases the red of a pixel by 1.2. Now I am going to um, open, open a picture file. Now, a little gotcha if you're on a Mac is Mac uh, Catalina has some protections that applications can access certain folders like your desktop folder or your downloads folder. So I would uh, put your media in your root folder. So um, usually you have your hard drive, then your users folder, then you can find your username, your home folder right here. I would put the pictures that you download in that home folder so you can find them right there. And so we'll make sure you don't pick a, a sound file, but a, a picture file. And we'll use um, the bridge file right here. And so we have this bridge right here um, that we'll go ahead and we'll uh, increase the red in the bridge. So we'll and we can see that the red is a little bit bigger, or it's a little more red than before. So that's what our function does. Now let's uh, convert this while loop into, or this for loop into a while loop. Now what we're actually going to need to do this in two steps. The first step, I'm going to convert it from um, 
looping through all of our pixels to going to the index method. And we use the index method when we want to go like half of the picture or like um, just reduce the red in the top half of the picture right there. So um, what we'll do is we'll say our pixels equals get pixels from our picture there. And then we'll instead of for p in get pixels, we'll do the p in a range. So you might remember this before, if we just wanted the top half, we'd do the length divided by 2. Um, and, and then down here, um, then down here for our uh, pixel, we'll say p equals pixels and index. So remember these square brackets are only for arrays, and pixel is an array, and this says which pixel would I like. So, well, whatever index happens to be. So at first index will be 0, then it will be 1, and that's the pixel that we'll get. The first pixel, the, the second pixel, and so on. And we'll do that. So once we got that working right there, instead of using a for loop for this, we can now convert it to a while loop. So to do a while loop, first of all, we take our initial position, and we set our uh, variable equal to that. So we're going to say index equals zero. So there's the initial. And then um, we'll replace this with a while loop. While index is less than the length of my pixels. So again, the stopping point right here will go right here in that. And then we can get rid of this. Now, if we just stopped here, we'd have an infinite loop because index would stay at zero forever. So the last thing we'll do in our loop is we'll say index plus equals one. So we'll add one to the index each time. So we'll move to the next one and eventually we'll finish and index will be bigger than the number of pixels we have. So let's uh, see if this uh, increases the red even more in our bridge. And as we can see, it's looking a lot uh, bigger. Um, if you go back and look at the video, I believe the red was something like 87 or so, but now it's 128. So we definitely have increased the red in this uh, picture here. So that's a, that's how you convert a for loop to a while loop. So you're going to have to do that on another program for your homework. And you're also going to have to do it with nested uh, for loops. Now nested for loops, you won't have to do the first conversion because they already are looping through based on numbers, but you will need to do the second where you take the starting point, so that index to that, the ending point will come right here, and then some sort of increment at the end of your loop.